Our story begins in Prague. I was there as Sydney's platonic plus one for her cousin's destination wedding. We were settling into our hotel, which actually used to be a palace. Despite its advertised opulence, the king-sized bed we were expecting to share was hardly big enough for one. So we were unpacking and debating who would get the couch when... How are we gonna sleep with that supposedly famous clock tower thing waking us up every hour? Who's planning on sleeping? We're in Prague, the city that never sleeps. Mm, I thought that was Paris. Whatever, they're both cities of love. Appropriate, since tonight, I'm- I know, I know. A wedding is prime territory for husband material. Then you'd know that I'm not looking for a husband. I just want a boyfriend. I am the only 26 year old who's been single her entire life. You're so lucky. That I was in one one year long relationship with a guy who only wore basketball shorts and never refilled the Brita? How do you plan to find love tonight? Oh, did you already stalk the groomsmen's Instagrams? Okay, check this out. Henry Stafford, best man. Single as of six weeks ago, loves hikes, art films, and he follows a lot of foreign film directors. So my game plan, pretend I love Pedro Almodovar, even though I probably don't. Okay, but doesn't that indicate a lack of compatibility? Okay, if not Henry, we've got two other single groomsmen. All right, are you ready for Max Lieberstein? Loves cats, reposting Barstool sports videos that I'm pretty sure are funny, and taking photos of Froyo bowls. Okay. Who's the last single groomsman? Jack Woods. Ugh, oh, he is tall. I mean, very tall. At least when I compared his torso to the size of his phone in one photo. Plus, he's got this adorable Pomeranian and... When it came to love, Sydney could be a little extra, but I was grateful she was easy to distract. Sydney was convinced she was the protagonist in her own rom-com, and she was determined to break her perpetual singledom and get the story started. Me? I was used to playing the role of the supporting gay best friend, but I liked it. Even in my work life, I served the function of an accompanist, a piano player for woodwind musical students taking their exams. By night, I was a bartender, the sympathetic ear. I was never one to seek out center stage and preferred the protection of the shadows cast by seekers of the spotlight. And now, I was heartbroken. All this to say, I was not looking to become the star of any story, let alone a love story. To be honest, I was in no headspace for a wedding. I was also terrified of dance floors because despite being a piano player, my rhythm did not translate to my feet. I tricked Sydney into staying at the table with me to scope out prospects. He's cute for you. No, 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 this is not about me. Plus, have you seen his shoes? They're Birkenstocks, it's October, and it's a wedding. Okay, nobody's perfect. It's not love at first sight. Oh, it isn't. It's love at first conversation. You think you could fall in love from one conversation? I think I could know. I was going to fall in love after one conversation. I thought Sydney was delusional, but I didn't want to rain on my friend's optimism. Girl, you know what? You go for Mr. Birkenstocks. I mean, he's definitely straight. You think so? Oh, look, there's the one I was telling you about. Jack Woods, tall guy? Uh, I think you mean the bald guy? Okay, you don't have to describe everyone by their perceived flaws. Fine, right? fine. We don't need to define Jack by his hair loss. How about... Oh, he's got a pink cocktail. You know I need a guy with the confidence to drink a pink cocktail. I've said that. Sydney was so obsessed with focusing on the positives that she could transform an average guy into her dream man. It was like watching her try to cram a guitar into a flute case. When Sydney discovered it wasn't even close to fitting, she was always heartbroken. Oh my God, he's perfect. Don't you think so? What do I say? Wait, how do I talk to him? Hey, uh, are you two staring at me? I'm Ronan. This is my best friend, Sydney. Hi. Hey, I'm Jack. I know. 
and your dog Parmesan, adorable. How do you know my dog? I stalked your Instagram. Cindy is very honest. Oh. It's one of her best qualities. <laughs> okay, so while I have you, I also noticed that you didn't delete the post with your ex-girlfriend. I mean, was that because you're still hoping to get back together or what's going on? She's also very opinionated. Well, I have to pee, but I'll take that into consideration, so. Sydney tried flirting with 12 men that night. Did she know how to flirt? No. But I didn't know how to either. I'd had one serious boyfriend and we were work friends from the bar. Then he made a move when we were taking inventory one night. I didn't have to take any risks. I admired Sydney for being able to take that much rejection. She was also pretty drunk. I'm gonna die alone. You're not gonna die alone. You're gonna find your happiness. Really? Well, I don't wanna make any promises. I did believe that Sydney would find her person one day, but after my last breakup, I had decided that dating wasn't for me. At age 26, I was prepared. No, I was excited to live the life of a bachelor, playing piano and dive bars or at school recitals, then having ample space to starfish in bed. <laughs> on weekends, I'd frequent new restaurants and no one would curb my culinary experience with their picky input. Being alone didn't sound so bad. At least that's what I... So, I'm getting strong vibes that this is your first ever chocolate fountain? That was Zeke. Lanky in a cute way. Blue, curious eyes that were trying to look right down into your soul. Flowy hair. Anyway, it, it didn't matter. I wasn't looking to date anyone. I was much more invested in pursuing the chocolate fountain. What? No, no, I've, I've, had a, I've had a lot of chocolate fountains. Why? You're dipping a banana? And you're dripping chocolate all over yourself. Oh, here, napkin. D does chocolate stain? I rented this suit. <laughs> well, you did that suit a favor. <sighs> Is it that bad? No, no, no. A men's warehouse rental is endearing. Would you like a lesson from a true chocolate fountain professional? Are you the self-proclaimed professional? Here's the real secret trick. Are those Twinkies? Do they even sell those in Europe? I packed them in my suitcase. I got the sense that Zeke was a well-versed wedding guest. Here for a good time only. The Twinkie was a major red flag. Wow, well... Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a choice. I'll give you a Twinkie to dip, but um, only if you hit the dance floor with me first. Thanks, but you know, I'm pretty full from the banana. Oh, come on. Do you see my back sweat? Look at this back sweat. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a lot of back sweat. Yeah, <laughs> I've been on the dance floor for four straight hours. You can do five minutes. Y you know, you, you go have fun. I, I, I don't want to hold you back from the dancing. You could tell from a mile away that Zeke was a player. The way he danced center stage. He was Sydney in gay guy form. He was at the wedding for one reason and one reason only. To get laid. No judgment, but that just wasn't me. Me? I, I liked real conversations. Real emotional connection and, well... I had, but now I was thoroughly single. Zeke didn't convince me to join the dance floor, but he did manage to convince Sydney. I didn't mind being left alone. One of the many perks of being single was the conversations it made way for. And since my breakup, I felt like older generations, those who had loved and lost, identified something in me, some commonality or common force. Hey, Ronan! Uh, you ever heard of facet joint osteoarthritis? Do you mean back pain? <laughs> Excruciating back pain. Oi! Can't sleep, can't dance. Happens to 90% of people by the time they're 65. Okay, those are terrible odds. That's why you gotta get out there while you're young and spry. Let's go, youngster, move it! Uh, on the dance floor? 
No, I mean in the kitchen. Come on. Okay, I have always been an old soul, just like you. And I, I prefer to be stage adjacent. Fist pumping, all that isn't really my thing. Yeah, it's not really my thing either, because I don't know what the hell that is, but I do know a poor excuse when I hear one. Okay, see that guy over there? That's what he's doing. Yeah. Wow, the poor guy. Looks like he's having fun! Okay, that guy is just <laughs> desperate for attention. Maybe you should be more desperate, because you're never going to meet a lady if you're sitting here stuffing your face with cake. I'm not interested in meeting a lady. Yeah, well, I can see that. I know what happened. I'll play psychiatrist. A lady broke your heart. Wah, wah, wah. I'm just hungry. A lady did not break my heart. Look, kid, life happens on the dance floor, not in a chair. My advice, don't be afraid to wave your arms in the air like you just don't care. I have a sore arm. Look, I mean, the wheels broke off my friend's suitcase and I had to carry it all the... Okay, tell me about your life before you ruined your back. I spent the rest of the wedding listening to Grandpa Harold's stories about courting his wife. Meanwhile, Cindy was being courted by Jack, who surprisingly hadn't been scared off. He really did have to pee. I know a lot of guys have used that line on me before in the past, and I, and I told him that. I was like, totally thought you were lying. And then I was like, not that guys don't usually like me. <laughs> they do. But I was like, just to be clear, I'm single. Uh, anyway, he asked me to dance. Come with us. I was happy for her. I really was. It was doubtful that she'd found love at first conversation, but at least she'd found lust to hold her over. The main thing was, I was finally off duty, and I couldn't wait to get into bed. Hours later, Sydney and I went back to our room with Jack. Sydney promised me he was only going to hang out for a few minutes, but after those few minutes, it became very clear that I was the one who was only supposed to hang out for a few minutes. Ronan, I hear walking the streets of Prague is a whole new experience after midnight. You should check it out. You know, it's 2 a.m. Jack, if, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure, yeah, I can head out. Uh, Sid, I'll pick you up for breakfast. Wait, no! I mean, yes to breakfast, but no, don't leave. Ronan, remember you said you wanted to see the castle all lit up at night? Remember when you said that? Mmm, no. Ronan! Sydney, why don't you just go hang out in Jack's room? I'm sharing it with four other dudes. Uh, I've got to use the restroom. BRB. Ronan, please. I really like Jack, and frankly... I haven't, you know, in a very long time. So you're sex me? Just give me, like, an hour. When that majestic clock tower strikes three? Fine. But I want the aisle seat on the way home. So there I was, destined to spend my night sleeping in a hotel corridor, thanks to Sydney, who was now convinced this new guy was the love of her life. I had no doubt I'd be consoling her on the plane ride home after he told her that long distance wasn't in the cards. As I rehearsed my, it's not you, it's him speech, it sounded like I wasn't the only one sexiled. I walked and peeked around the corner. Lo and behold, it was the chocolate fountain expert, Zeke, pouting on his hotel room door. Come on, Clarence! You promised you wouldn't do this again! Please, I'm exhausted. You've done this every night of our trip. Can't you two go have sex in her room? Does anyone care that I am working this place? I'm not paying for my half of the hotel room. Last night, I slept on a trolley. Or I'm going to do it myself. One hour, okay? You can have the room for exactly one hour, but then I'm sleeping in my bed for once. You too? Hey, it's you. The one who didn't dance all night. Idea, uh, walk around Prague with me? Yeah, I, I just, I have a lot of emails. Don't worry. I get that you're not interested in me. This will be strictly platonic. Just a way to kill time for an hour until we get our beds back. An hour? Just an hour. Come on, 